Brainiac invades Earth. Superman does everything he can to defeat one of his greatest enemies. Is it possible for Earth to survive the same fate that led to the total destruction of Krypton? Today, we're resuming our segment The Complete Story here on our channel, so join me in this video to learn all that happened in Superman, Brainiac. Welcome to Comic Chronicles. Superman, Brainiac is a storyline published by DC Comics in 2008, featuring the invasion of Brainiac on Earth, and the classic moment where Superman saves the bottled city of Kander from the hands of his enemy. Just like Kingdom Come, this is one of the inspirations listed by James Gunn for his upcoming Superman movie, so don't forget to give a super like to this video and subscribe. If you love comics, series, movies, and animations, this is your place, be a part of our ever-growing community here on YouTube. Up and away! Published in Action Comics No. 866 to No. 870 in Superman, New Krypton Special, The Superman, Brainiac Storyline was written by Jeff Johns, with art by Gary Frank, inks by John Sybil, and colors by Brad Anderson and Hi-Fi. In Krypton, 35 years in the past, an alien invasion occurred. Brainiac was the invader. During his attack, he bottled the city of Kander for his collection. The story then cuts to the present time in Metropolis. At the Daily Planet, a meeting with reporters is taking place. Perry White announces the return of Cat Grant and Steve Lombard to the team, and after the greetings, Cat flirts with Clark while Steve flirts with Lois, but they are both ignored, Clark Kent and Lois Lane are married, and Lois already knows Superman's secret identity. Shortly after this moment at the Daily Planet, Clark hears about something entering the atmosphere and falling toward Earth. Superman flies over and discovers it was a robot sent by Brainiac. The robot was a probe from Brainiac tracking intelligent life and sending coordinates back to the real Brainiac. The transmission fails, but soon, another probe finds more intelligent life on another planet, causing Brainiac to change his focus. At the Fortress of Solitude, Superman and Supergirl analyze the robot that had arrived on Earth. Kal-El explains to his cousin the origin of Brainiac, that he is an alien from the planet Kalu, and during his first battle against the Man of Steel, he possessed a supposed medium named Milton Fine. Using science, Brainiac created many other bodies to control, some organic and others robotic. Additionally, Superman tells Kara how powerful Brainiac's mind is, a thousand times more powerful than the two Kryptonians combined. The Man of Tomorrow also highlights that the villain never appears the same way twice. Kal-El says that the molecular structure present in the robot's body is the same as the one found in another Brainiac he destroyed, but Kara insists that this robot isn't him, but rather one of his probes, similar to the other clone androids he has faced. Superman has only fought Brainiac's programming but has never actually encountered the real one, and until now, no one ever has. Kara is scared and remembers what happened to Kander during its invasion and the possibility that Kander is with Brainiac since the city was taken from Krypton before its destruction. Supergirl concludes by saying that sometimes she wishes she didn't have so many memories of Krypton because then she might not miss her home planet as much as her cousin does. Clark reassures her not to worry because he will put an end to this. At the Kent farm, Clark talks to his parents about going after Brainiac, under the possibility that Kander still exists and is in the villain's possession. Moreover, Ken wants his cousin to feel safe. His mother, Martha, dislikes the idea, but his father says he must do what he believes is right and shows memories of when he was a child to explain that, although he's his son, Clark has a very important role in the world for his parents to keep hidden, but Jonathan keeps memories of Clark's childhood in a box, as he needs something to remember his son. Clark then takes a horseshoe and uses his heat vision to write, best dad in the world. Back at the Daily Planet, Clark Kent discusses with Lois about going into space after Brainiac for Kara's sake. After this, the story moves to space, where Superman is in his ship reviewing reports regarding the Krypton invasion suffered at the hands of Brainiac, moments before the explosion. Soon, Superman finds Brainiac invading another planet and bottling a city. Superman tries to stop him, but Brainiac bottles the city and destroys the sun of that planet, obliterating it as well, leaving Superman alone in space. Unconscious, the Man of Steel is ultimately captured by Brainiac. In Metropolis, Supergirl goes to the Daily Planet to look for her cousin, but Cat Grant, who has a rivalry with her in this story, receives her, and the conversation quickly becomes tense after Supergirl innocently mentions to Cat that she's seeing strange plastic implants on her. Lois arrives, interrupting what Kara was about to say, and takes her away to ask what she was doing at the Daily Planet. 
Kara is desperate, as she can't find her cousin anywhere in the world. Back to the Man of Tomorrow, Superman wakes up in Brainiac's ship while his probes try to study the Kryptonian's body. Kal-El breaks free and finds several other beings trapped there, along with various bottled civilizations, including Kander. Soon, the real Brainiac appears and shows himself to be larger and just as strong as Superman. Brainiac declares he will go to Earth using the coordinates found in the Kryptonian ship because there lies his cousin, another Kryptonian, whom Brainiac also desires. Superman tries but fails to defeat Brainiac through sheer brute force. Afterward, Brainiac's ship arrives on Earth, in Metropolis. The city is attacked by Brainiac's army of robots. Supergirl, though scared, decides to fight, as she won't allow another planet to suffer the way Krypton did. As the invasion takes place, Superman attempts to resist Brainiac in every way until he manages to pull one of the cables connected to the villain's head, freeing himself from his enemy's grip. Superman finally retaliates against Brainiac, temporarily knocking him out and begins searching for candor among the many bottled cities. Kal-El hears a voice coming from within one of the cities, the voice belongs to his uncle, Zor-El, who is in candor. Zor-El recounts that he and his wife, Alara, along with their daughter, Kara, were in Argo City and not Kander. Instead of ignoring Jor-El's advice, like the Kryptonian Council did, Zor-El tried to recreate Brainiac's force field technology. Though success was limited, they managed to create a dome around Argo City that protected it from the planet's destruction. While many homes were devastated, hundreds survived, however, after sensing the use of his technology, Brainiac located Argo City and invaded, mortally injuring those he deemed to have no valuable information and incorporating what remained of the city into the bottled city of Kander, which he had taken before Krypton's destruction. Before this happened, Zor-El managed to send his daughter, Kara, in a ship towards Earth so that she could watch over her cousin, Kal-El. However, as we know from Supergirl's origin, Kara's ship did not arrive on Earth at the same time as Kal-El, and after wandering through space for years, she ended up not aging while her cousin is now older. Superman loses his psychic link with Zor-El after Brainiac regains consciousness and captures the Kryptonian again. Meanwhile, in Metropolis, Kara is captured by the robots, and soon the city also begins to be bottled. People scream for help from Superman, but he is now trapped in Brainiac's ship and cannot save his city. Then, after adding Metropolis to his collection, Brainiac sends one of his robots towards the sun, and after the sun's destruction, Earth would follow suit. The Kaluan villain reveals to the Man of Steel that this is exactly what happened to Krypton, Brainiac bottled Kander and sent one of his probes to destroy Krypton's sun, thus ending Kal-El's home planet. Earth has less than one hour to be saved. At the Kent farm in Smallville, Jonathan and Martha Kent sense something very wrong is about to happen and fear that whatever is going on, Clark is surely in the middle of it all. In the bottled city of Metropolis, Lois Lane cries out for Superman's help, and while Brainiac boasts to the Kryptonian, Kal-El becomes furious upon hearing the numerous cries for help coming from various civilizations. Enraged, Superman finally breaks free and strikes several blows at Brainiac, injuring the villain. Then, the Man of Tomorrow recovers Metropolis and Kander and leaves, promising to return to save all the other civilizations. Kara, who is also taken aboard the ship, awakens after her cousin comes to help her, but soon Brainiac regains his composure and heads toward the Kryptonians. Superman then tells Supergirl to head towards the sun to prevent Brainiac's robot from causing a supernova, but Kara says she can't do it because she's scared. Superman, with his hopeful nature, tells her it's okay to feel fear, and those words encourage her to fly at high speed. After that, Brainiac claims he holds life in the palm of his hand and will see Superman lose his life. Superman replies that life cannot be bottled or controlled, and that despite possessing vast knowledge, the Kaluan knows nothing about life. The Man of Steel easily incapacitates Brainiac and declares that the ship is not life but rather Brainiac's bottle, and he is going to take him out of it. Superman then forcibly tears Brainiac from his ship, and upon falling into a swamp, becomes desperate as he can't face things he can't control, like bacteria and insects. Superman then lands on Brainiac's head, welcoming him to Earth. Brainiac asserts that Superman cannot extract the cities from his bio-shell, as the containment fields won't hold. Superman thanks him for the information and flies rapidly toward Metropolis and then to the Fortress of Solitude. Metropolis returns to normal, and meanwhile, Brainiac sends a robot toward the Kent farm. Jonathan saves Martha. Near the sun, 
Kara manages to stop the robot, and at the Fortress of Solitude, Kander emerges from the encasement, however, at the Kent farm, Jonathan suffers a heart attack. Martha calls out for Clark, but he was watching the city of Kander grow again. When he realizes his mother is shouting, he flies quickly to the farm, but it is too late. Jonathan Kent is gone. In the epilogue of the story, Jonathan Kent's funeral takes place. The story has not a single dialogue bubble, allowing the narrative to flow solely through the art storytelling. During the funeral, there's a small surprise, Bruce Wayne was there with Alfred. He appears briefly in a panel, in the shadows, wearing a trench coat resembling a cape, with Alfred behind him. The story ends with Clark at the Kent farm. Enraged, he imagines going to prison and ending Brainiac's life, but Lois tells him he shouldn't think that way, but rather never forget what his father taught him, closing the story on a very sad note, as Clark looks at all the memories of his childhood that his father kept, crying. This story is quite interesting, and this plot involving Brainiac invading Krypton or even bottling Metropolis has served as inspiration for other well-known adaptations, such as Injustice 2. The story written by Jeff Johns is quite simple in its premise, but in my opinion, it is well executed, it's not something extremely elaborate, but it works well, and Gary Frank's art is also solid here, even at several moments making Superman's face resemble that of Christopher Reeve. It was a competent job by the team. The negative point, in my opinion, lies with the plot. Since this story has been used as a basis for various adaptations, for anyone reading the comic for the first time, it may not hold as much shock factor. However, despite all that, both the script and the art are very engaging and make for a pleasurable read, you can finish it rather quickly. Although this video has covered the story in full, it would be impossible to include all the details present in a brief summary. So here's our recommendation for you to read the story to catch all the finer points involving this work. To purchase this comic or learn more about Superman and his entire comic mythology, use our commission links to buy Superman comics, DC, Marvel, or even any type of purchase, thus supporting our work without paying anything extra. Thank you very much for all the support you give us. Now I want to know your opinion, did you enjoy this story? Have you read the comic? Write your opinion here in the comments, give a like to this video, subscribe to our channel, and activate the notifications so you don't miss any video about Superman in DC. Thank you very much to everyone who watched until the end. Up and away!